Welcome guys. Uh, I'm creating these to give you a resource outside of class. I'm going to walk through these problems. This is the uh, the first video of many hopefully that I'm going to create that will they'll help you along the way. My goal is to go through these relatively rapidly. No one wants to watch a long video so I'm going to try to make it as quick as possible. Uh, if you need to rewind feel free to do so. Uh, I have provided the question that I'm going to be answering in the comments below. So if you want to solve it ahead of time, like now for example, uh, give, it a, give it a try and you can follow along with me. This is my first video, so I'm sure they're going to improve. I'm also using one of these little uh, tablets to write on the screen. And this is kind of the first time I'm just getting used to it. So it'll improve, I'm sure. But in the meantime, you're going to have to deal with my awful handwriting, which was pretty awful to begin with. So this is the problem. Uh, what is the theoretical yield in grams of carbon dioxide from the complete combustion of 5 grams of propane and 10 grams of oxygen? So first of all, this is a stoichiometric problem. So the fact that it's a stoichiometric problem means, one, we need a balanced chemical equation. Second, you need to think in terms of moles. Grams will appear at the beginning, as they do here and they'll also appear at the end, but in between we need to think in terms of moles. We're only going to do two types of different uh, different conversions. One, moles to grams. Of course, in order to do moles to grams, we need to look at our periodic table. So if you need to grab one, do so now. The periodic table will provide us with a molar mass or molecular weight or atomic weight, whatever you want to call it. Molar mass typically is what you call it. Uh, and that unit is going to be grams per mole, so how many grams per mole of uh, material. Second, we are going to be using uh, a what we call molar ratio. A molar ratio is going to give us the relationship between different chemicals in the same balanced chemical equation. So in this case, moles of A, it can be anything, and but in this case it's going to be methane, two moles of B, carbon dioxide. So what is the comparison? How many moles of A versus how many moles of B is it going to, uh, are we going to produce or are we going to need, that kind of thing. So the molar ratio gives the relationship between uh, molecules within, within the same balanced chemical equation. So let's move on to start answering our problem. Before we do so, first thing we got to do, we got to gather some information. So let's start. C3H8 plus O2. There's our combustion reaction. Combustion is always uh, always oxygen burning something uh, yields H2O plus CO2. So there's where we start. Now we need to balance things out. If you need help with balancing, uh, I'm going to create a video shortly and I'll put it in here when I do. Uh, so three carbons. I need four. I need a total of eight hydrogen. So I'll put that looks like a four. Good. Uh, and then finally, total of ten oxygen. So we'll need a five in front of this. These numbers are going to be important for our molar ratio. Uh, they're going to tell us the relationship between chemicals. You'll notice that propane does not have one. We can always put a one in there, but of course, chemists don't really ever write ones. So there we go. That's what we start with. Now let's gather some more information. So we don't always need all of these, but it's not a bad habit to kind of determine the molar masses of all the chemicals you're using. So here we have. Uh, three uh, C propane, which is three carbons that weigh 12.01 grams each, grams per mole each. I got this information, by the way, from the periodic table, plus the second part, which is eight hydrogens at 1.01 uh, grams per mole each. Add those together, multiply, and then add them together, and you should end up with 44.11 grams per Fantastic. So there we go. That's the molar mass of my molar mass of my propane. Oxygen, two oxygens weighs 32.00 grams per mole. And you'll notice that 32 grams per mole is twice the oxygen. I don't care about the number in front. I don't care about how many oxygens I have. All I care about is the chemical itself. All I care about is the fact that oxygen is oxygen, two two O's in it. All right, water. 18.02 grams per mole. And then finally, CO2, 44.01 grams per mole. Fantastic. There we go. We've got our molar masses. Next up, let's take a look at my 
molar ratios. So molar ratios, these are the numbers that are out front. Nothing more than the coefficient. Don't get confused about this. This is, once again, the relationship between chemicals within the same chemical equation, balanced chemical equation. So C3H8, what is it? What is the ratio of propane to oxygen to water to CO2? Okay, so if I have one propane, mol mole of propane, I'm going to need five moles of oxygen, four moles, which will give me four moles of H2O, and three moles of CO2. So the relationship is just the coefficients out front. Okay, so that's what we start with. Those numbers will become important, especially when we're going from, let's say, propane converting into moles of CO2. We need to know kind of the relationship of how much we expect to get. All right. So next up, let's make a plan. I call this the stoichiometric square, uh, and this is how it's going to work. We have our question provided us with grams of propane. I'm just going to call it A. Let's just call it something really generic. Our problem gives us grams of A, so grams of something. In order to go to grams of something else, B in this case, that's my theoretical yield. That's the target. That's what we're going after. Um, we need to make sure we can't go directly from grams of one to grams of another. This is not allowed. You can't convert grams of something to grams of something else because they're different, right? These things are completely different. Propane weighs a different amount than CO2. Uh, oxygen weighs a different amount than water. So we can't go directly from one to the other. So grams of A needs to be converted to grams of B. And this is, once again, our theoretical yield. Theoretical yield is always in grams. So grams of A, in order to go to convert part of the square, I said it was a square, and it will be. All right, so grams of A needs to be converted into moles of A. And then once you have, and in order to go from grams to moles, we will use the molar mass of A, whatever that may be. So molar mass of A in order to go from one to the other. Once again, just a conversion. Second step, you, you want to get to moles of B because we have to switch chemicals. At some point we have to switch chemicals. We're using the molar ratio to do that. So the molar ratio will go from one chem will allow us to go from one chemical to another. And then finally, in order to go from moles of B to grams of B, this will be molar mass of B. Okay, so that's it. Those three steps will get you what you need. So step one, convert to moles of A, whatever A is, one of these chemicals, one of these many chemicals you have. Second, we're going to use molar ratio. If you want to go from moles of B to grams of B, this is the third step, once again, using the molar mass. So this is the stoichiometric square. You're always going to be start somewhere along the way. Uh, just keep in mind that you'll start somewhere and you'll end somewhere in this square, and that's really kind of the half of the battle. So here's our information kind of uh, ni nicely put out for you guys so you can actually see it. So let's start to solve the problem. So we were given 5.0 grams of C3H8. And I'm going to go up to my little square here. This is where I start. I want to get over to here. In order to do so, I need to take two steps. One, moles of A, then moles to B. Moles of B. So first and foremost, we need to convert to moles. I'll use my molar mass in order to do so. So here we go. We'll set up a conversion. We want to be left with moles, right? This is what our target is. So we want to be left with moles of C3H8. There it is. I want moles in the top because that's the unit I want to prevail. That's the unit I want left. And I need grams to cancel, so I'll toss that on the bottom. So 44.11 grams per one mole. Once again, from the periodic table, that's where I got that information. Grams cancel. 5 divided by 44.11 is going to give me 0.114 moles of propane. So now I ended up here, moles of A, moles of propane in this case. But, of course, I don't care about moles of propane because I need to compare it to the same thing uh, as my other component, which is oxygen. So moles of A, I need to convert into some type of product. And what we were looking for was moles of B. Moles of B, in this case, is going to be CO2. So 
Next up, we are going to take our moles of propane, 114 moles of propane, and set up a conversion. And we're, our goal is to get two moles of CO2. So moles of CO2 is our target. I want moles of C3H8 to cancel. I'll put that in the bottom. I want moles of uh, CO2 on the top because I want that to be left. Uh, now we're going to use the molar ratio. Okay, so we started here. This was molar mass. Now here, molar ratio in order to do this conversion. So moles of CO2, let's look. Moles of CO2, there it is. Three moles of CO2 for every one mole of propane. So three to one moles of propane cancel. I'm left with 0.114 times three and it's going to leave me with moles of CO2. So 0 0.340 moles of CO2 is what I get at the end. So if I burn five grams of propane, that's what I started with, I will end up with 0 0.340 moles of CO2. That's important. That's good to know. So that's how much CO2 we're going to produce. We don't have to worry about getting to grams of B just yet because we want to figure out which one limits the reaction. So next up, let's solve for, well, let's solve for O2. Let's start with 10 grams of O2. That's what we're given to start. And of course, we're starting here again. And I want to convert two moles of O2 because that's where we need to go. So set up a conversion. I want to end up with moles of O2 because remember we need to use moles to, con uh, to communicate between the two. Uh, grams of O2 to cancel, moles of O2 on the top. Uh, so grams is going to cancel and according to my molar mass 32.00 grams per one mole. Grams cancels 10 divided by 32 is going to give me 0.313 moles of O2. So there we go. It's a good start. Uh, 0.313 moles of O2. And now we're here. We want to move over to moles of, moles of B, which in this case is going to be CO2. So let's do it. 3 point, or 0 0.313 moles of O2. Set up a conversion. All these are just conversions. Nothing complicated about them. We want to end up with moles of CO2. So we can compare it to the number that we just got. Moles of O2 on the bottom, so they cancel. Moles of CO2 on the top. Uh, so what's the ratio? So let's take a look. CO2 is 3. Uh, O2 is 5. Okay, so a little bit harder than the previous one. The previous one was 3 to 1. This is a little bit more complicated. 0.313 times 3 divided by 5, or times 3 fifths, really. Uh, what you end up with is 0.188 moles of CO2. So what this means, of course, moles of O2 cancels. So what this means is if I burn 10 grams of O2, I'm going to end up with 0.188 moles of CO2. So this gives us, uh, gives us insight into kind of how much you expect to get out. So let's kind of gather all our numbers and look at what we got. So what we have is 5 grams of propane is going to produce 0.340 moles of CO2 and 10 grams of O2 is going to produce 0.188. What that tells us is, is this. Which one is limiting the reaction? Well, if we burn both of these, we can produce a lot of CO2 with the propane we've got. But of course, we end up only getting uh, 0.188 moles of CO2. We've run out of oxygen well before we've run out of CO2, or before we've run out of propane, therefore, O2 is limiting. The fact that O2 is limiting is going to tell us that, well, that is what's going to drive the reaction. That is good, what's going to essentially tell us uh, how much CO2 we're going to end up with, right? There's no extra O2 to react once you run out of it. So this is the maximum amount of CO2 this reaction can produce. So what is the theoretical yield? Of course, this is always in grams. So if I have 0.188 moles of CO2, because remember that's limiting, that's what we're limited to. Set up a conversion. I want moles of CO2 to cancel. I want grams of CO2 to prevail. Uh, so one mole of CO2 is equal to 44.11 grams 
moles cancel, and I am going to be left with 8.25 grams of CO2. So what is my theoretical yield? There it is, right there. 8.25 grams of CO2. So that's pretty much it. So what you do is you solve for the same chemical, CO2 in this case, and then whichever one gives you less CO2, okay, that one is going to be your limiting reagent. So in this case, oxygen produced less CO2, we saw for the same chemical, and therefore it's going to be the limiting reagent. O2 is limiting, okay? Good. Now, the theoretical yield or percent yield question. Our theoretical yield we determined to be 8.25 grams of CO2. Uh, after, after running this experiment in lab, you and your lab partner only managed to recover 6.3 grams of CO2. Well, 6.3 grams of CO2, this is going to be your experimental uh, yield. In order to get percent yield, we need to follow this equation. Percent yield is essentially going to be uh, your experimental yield, uh, or actual, divided by your uh, theoretical. times 100. This is kind of the real world, the experimental is the real world, the theoretical is, is the ideal world. Okay, so now we'll just plug in our numbers. 6.3 grams of CO2 divided by our theoretical yield, which is 8.25 grams times 100. Grams cancel. We end up with 76%. Once again, it's percent yield, so let's treated as such. So 76% yield. Okay, so hopefully that helps. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to email me.